So to start off the day, we got a cold cart workshop. So please welcome to the stage, D. And one of the and one of the many bands in Bitcoin BTC sessions. Take it away, guys. <laughs> I, I think I heard a boo. Is there a Ben hater out there? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Did everybody get to sleep on time? Uh, no. Not me. <laughs> it's OK. This is going to be fun. Uh, we're talking cold cards, yeah. and uh, amongst other things. But uh, uh, D has put together an insane uh, nicely put together Thank presentation, uh, and I get to be alongside him and and throw in my hot takes on things. Of course, and, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Do you want to chat a little bit about um, CoinKite? What's going? Sure. On? Yeah. Well, I'll maybe introduce myself first. I'm uh, D. I go by Hodl D on Twitter. Uh, I'm the support specialist here at CoinKite. So um, you know, I'm the break it down, make it simple for you. Um, guy, we have uh, email. Uh, we don't have a phone number, but uh, you know, if you're emailing us, uh, basically you're going to get me. Um, I, hopefully, I'm, I'm nice <laughs> and uh, can help you out with your questions. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, I help out with you know, if you want to, you, you got Coinbase and you want to, you're, you're starting to have a hardware wallet for the first time, um, and you don't know what to do. Uh, I'm going to be sending you links and information on how to um, get get set up. So, awesome. yeah. And I'm Ben, uh, BTC Sessions. I do online YouTube tutorials, basically step by step, anything you need to know in Bitcoin. How do I do this? There's likely a video at some point somewhere that I've done, so you can find most of that. So The amount of emails that I, I give links to this guy's YouTube videos is insane. So <laughs> we're, the, uh, we're the break it down guys. Uh, you know, a lot of people here are probably going to talk a lot of high level stuff. and. Um, you know, people that are just starting into Bitcoin or don't know what a hardware wallet is, you know, they may need um, people like us to right, break it down for them and, and help them understand it at a, a more basic level rather than just throwing you in the deep end. So uh, we're, we're swimming in the shallow end. <laughs> Can I uh, just get a quick show of hands? I just, I just want to get an idea kind of where we're at in the room. This, this is meant to be very accessible to everybody. Um, how many people have... Uh, one used a cold card before, just so I can kind of see. Okay, good. There's a good chunk. Awesome. How many people have ever interacted with a desktop wallet called Sparrow Wallet before? Okay, good. Um, and how, buddy, how many people have ever used a mobile wallet called Nunchuck Wallet before? Okay, less. Oh. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. More so, Sparrow users than Nunchuck. That's yeah, good. that's cool. It's good to see the Sparrow thing out there. Yeah. Um, uh, before we, I guess, dive into uh, slides, videos, all that kind of stuff to show you, um, what I do want to say is the interface on Sparrow, as you're interacting with Cold Card, there's a lot of information that is on the screen in front of you. But the nice part is, is that you don't need to know what all that stuff is when you first start using it. All you need to know are the basics. Oh, this is my address and this is how much Bitcoin I'm sending. Little things like that. And then as you begin to utilize it, the, the medium that you're using actually becomes the mechanism through which you learn because you start to see things and ask, well, what is this? And a lot of wallet interfaces dumb things down a lot to keep it simple, which is great for usability, but it's nice to have a wallet that also teaches you things as you use it. And so I'll just, again, preface this whole talk by saying, don't be afraid to try something slightly outside of your comfort zone because you're gonna find that you make leaps and bounds in terms of educating yourself and just go out there and look for the resources available, so yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, uh, putting a 10 bucks on a hardware wallet and, and, and moving it around and interacting with Bitcoin is obviously a, a great first step and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, you know, it, you don't have to put your life savings on your hardware wallet before, you know, trying it, right? Um, and freaking out like, oh, where's my funds, right? Um, so just put a small amount on and just and move it around and interact with Sparrow Nunchuck and just, you know, figure out how Bitcoin works and, you know, um, go from there, right? Start, start small and, and, and you work your way up, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Dive in. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to introduce CoinKite a little bit. Uh, we were established in uh, block 1,041, uh, sorry, 141,000, uh, roughly 2011. 
Um, and here's uh, kind of some of our products. So uh, our bread and butter, we have the uh, Mark IV uh, on the left there. And uh, this is our uh, cold storage hardware wallet. Um, it is the, we believe it's the most secure hardware wallet on the market. Uh, and we are a Bitcoin only company. I uh, really want to emphasize the Bitcoin only part. Um, you know, security comes with, uh, you know, if you have more, think of it, if you have more code running on your uh, hardware wallet, like other altcoins and stuff, um, that could be a potential backdoor exploit to your device. So um, the device is um, as smart as it needs to be, and it's as dumb as you want it to be, um, kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, that's again our bread and butter. Um, we have uh, in the middle there uh, a seed plate. Uh, if you guys are familiar with seed words, you usually have a 12 or 24 word seed. And if you put it on paper and your you know, house goes up in flames or uh, you get a flood, um, then you know, that piece of paper could potentially be um, you know, gone. So you want to put it into something that, or stamp it into something that's um, a little more hardy. Um, so you know, we have a metal plate, super thick. Um, it's got a nice grid for you to put in uh, your seed words to so that you know, if you have a flash flood, a fire, what, whatnot, um, your, your seed is still uh, safe, right? Um, your, your seed words are the most important part of your setup. So um, you know, maybe keep this in a very secure location. Um, we also have uh, on the bottom there a block clock, uh, more of a, uh, you know, a fun product. Goes on your wall, shows you the block height, uh, shows you uh, sats per dollar, uh, price, price in dollars of, of a Bitcoin, uh, things like that. You can kind of interchange it and uh, it's really cool. We also have uh, the block clock micro, it's a, it's a smaller version as well. Um, to the top right, we have a tap signer. Uh, think of it like a hardware wallet in your pocket or in your wallet. Um, it's, it's similar to uh, the Mark IV. Uh, it, it still is very secure uh, and uh, it's uh, a little bit more user friendly maybe for uh, someone that's just getting into Bitcoin and doesn't want to maybe purchase uh, an MK4. You know, it's a little bit more budget friendly. Um, so a great like intro and uh, you know, potentially maybe a, a, middle, a middle ground for um, you know, maybe not a, a large amount of funds, but you know, medium to small amount of funds. It's great for and, travel, to be honest. Oh, like, yeah. if you're coming to a conference and you're like, I just don't want funds in a hot wallet on my phone, it adds that extra layer of security. So yeah. it's kind of my my go-to if I'm going somewhere and I'm going to buy something with Bitcoin. Well, you know, I, I I now have a second layer of security with me instead of just, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have my Mark IV and my laptop at a desk as I'm buying something from a booth. So yeah. there's my tap signer. Yeah, and it's super budget friendly, um, very cheap. Um, but uh, very powerful and very secure. Um, and think of it like a two-factor authentication where you, know, you may not want something that, you, know, you don't want uh, a phone wallet where you can just send off right away. You need your tap signer to tap and put in your PIN. Um, so it's kind of like a two-factor authentication. And finally, we have our SAS card. Um, you know, it's, it's like, a, think of it like a gift card. So someone that may not you know, know about Bitcoin or have Bitcoin, um, you can still gift them Bitcoin. You can load it onto the, the SAS card and give it to them, and now they own Bitcoin. Um, so it's really cool for you know weddings and, and things like that. And you know that SAS card can hold a dollar's worth of Bitcoin or you know millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. And you know until you tap it on your phone, you you'd never know. Um, so that's uh, you know you could buy a house with that <laughs> if you really wanted to, or a car, right? Uh, maybe not, but uh, you know it's, uh, something that you could. Uh, it's an option. All right. Uh, so we're going to be going through. Uh, a number of different topics here. Um, many of you are going to be film familiar with some of these things, but it's important to always reiterate and introduce topics and and uh, and uh, definitions for people in the room that are just kind of coming into this. So we're going to be talking about public and private keys. Public keys being a way of identifying uh, what Bitcoin addresses you own, being able to audit your balance, receive new funds. Private key basically being the keys to your money. How do you unlock your Bitcoin? and send it where you want it to go. We're going to be talking about hot versus cold wallets. A hot wallet being a wallet where the keys reside on a device that can directly connect to the internet. So an app on your phone where you don't have an additional device that can approve things. An app on your phone, that's a hot wallet. Uh, a, an application you've downloaded on your computer where you can just use that solely and be able to send transactions, that's a hot wallet. If you require a device that houses the keys to your money, like a cold card or a tap signer, cold wallet. Um, companion app. This is something I wanted to touch on quick before we get into the, the screens of how you're signing transactions. Um, 
My favorite thing, uh, one of my favorite things about the cold card is it does not have a native proprietary app that it forces you to use. As earlier pointed out earlier this week, uh, CoinKite doesn't even know if you've ever turned on your cold card after you buy it. Nobody knows other than yourself unless you happen to advertise it, but you can set up the device entirely without any sort of third party app and then you can take your public key and allocate it to an interface on your phone or your computer so that you can see your balance, so that you can, uh, so you can receive funds, so you can do all of those things, and then you can approve transactions with the hardware afterwards. So we're gonna be uh, touching with Sparrow for desktop uh, with the cold card. Um, a watch-only wallet, again, allows you to watch a balance and perhaps add to it. And then a master fingerprint ID is a way that you can verify the interface you're looking at on your computer or your phone is the same wallet that you're interacting with when you look at your cold card. And it's just a string of digits that helps you identify it's the same account. It's the same. Speaking of losing him, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, well, while he's uh, kind of getting figured out here, uh, like a watch-only wallet, think of it like a, a glass box or a glass vault, right? You can see inside, you know, uh, there's you know, some Bitcoin in there. You can see all of the Bitcoin, um, but you need your private key to uh, sign and, you know. No worries. Yeah, I'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's like a glass box. You know, you need the key to get in. Um, without your private key, you can't spend those funds, and that's on purpose, right? You don't want your private key embedded in your phone because if someone steals your phone, um, they can access your funds. So if you have a, a watch-only wallet, um, you can just view those funds and you know, not have to worry about someone stealing them. But you can still kind of audit and, and, and know what, what's in your wallet, right? And receive funds and generate the addresses needed to, to receive those funds. Technical difficulty, sorry. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll go to the next screen here. Uh, master fingerprint ID, you know, might be a little uh, like, oh, what is that? Or, you know, how do I, you know, use that? Basically, think of it like, uh, you know, you have eight digits Six. on your on your cold card. Oh, we got it? Perfect. We We're got good. it. If you go to uh, view identity on your cold card, you can basically see eight digits. It's the first four bytes of your uh, uh, public key. And you can, you can basically match those up to what's, uh, you're, what you're viewing on Sparrow and make sure that you're you know, uh, accessing the correct wallet, right? So say you know, someone's a little bit more advanced, they might have a passphrase on top of their, their 24 words and they forgot to apply it before signing a transaction. That, that master fingerprint ID will be different from Sparrow compared to your cold card. Once you apply your passphrase or uh, something like that, they'll, they'll be, you know, you'll be accessing the correct wallet and, and therefore can sign those transactions. All right. Let's dive into it. Cool, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so here's an example, just kind of what it looks like on your MK4. You go to view identity, it'll say master fingerprint, and those are the eight digits that you'll see, and you'll compare that uh, to Sparrow, uh, and just to, to ensure that you're accessing the correct wallet. So uh, we're just gonna intro uh, the Mark IV a little bit. Um, so obviously you can see it comes in uh, many different colors. Um, you know, it's, uh, again, we, we believe it's the most secure uh, device on, on the planet. Um, it has uh, what's called two secure elements. Think of it like a labyrinth, like an impossible labyrinth that no one, even if they have your device, can extract your, your private key, right? Um, it, the point of this device is to, to make sure that no one can access it. Um, so having that feature is extremely important, and if you don't have uh, the secure elements on the device, then someone that potentially grabs your device from you could, you know, put some wires to it, short circuit it, and you know, basically grab your pin, access your, your funds, and, and, and take out your private key. So secure elements are extremely important, and we also believe that having code that is uh, you know, verifiable um, and you know, fully on GitHub for people to audit and view is really important as well, right? If you have a closed source uh, firmware, you have no idea what you're running. Um, so it's kind of the trust me bro, um, type type of thing where you know if it's closed source you, you, again you can't you can't read it you can't audit it there's not smart people that can look through that code and ensure that what you're putting on your device is legit there could be a back door you never know um, so having that code readily available on GitHub um, and being able to be audited is extremely important as well some might consider a backdoor a feature <laughs> 
we don't up we don't upload your uh, keys to an iCloud server. They don't leave your device. They stay on your device, and only you can access it. You know that's the important part here, right? Getting spicy this morning. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> throwing some shade. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. So okay, so we're gonna go kind of more into the Sparrow um, setup right now. Um, basically, you d you download a desktop app called Sparrow uh, from their website. And you know uh, you're going to go into files, add a new wallet, and this is the first screen you'll get. So you're just going to put in your 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 label for your wallet. So here we have you know my cold card wallet, and we're going to create this wallet. So we haven't. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say, um, uh, those of you that have interacted with Sparrow, again, this is the type of s screen you're going to get and be familiar with um, as you're setting things up. Um, there's a lot in front of you. It's a lot to take in, but. Uh, all you need to do is focus on the parts that pertain to you, and and then you can learn more later. Also, just to preface this, this is from the perspective of plugging in the cold card as the simplest way of using it. So right. you know you can use it as simply as possible, but there are many ways to interact with a cold card. I'll, those of you that have a cold card may be familiar with air gapping it using an SD card and everything, and that is available here. We're just going to show the basics of interacting for those people that aren't quite ready for air gapping yet. Yeah, so you know, you can see there under key store, right, says, you know, connect hardware wallet or um, air gapped hardware wallet, which is the micro SD or XPUB. Um, basically, this process is just importing your public key, right? Again, I uh, want to preface, emphasize that uh, your private key is not, you know, being transferred to this app. You're only transferring the public key to view your funds and, and set up that watch-only wallet. Um, so at the top, you see uh, single signature. You know, I'm sure you guys have heard of multi-sig as well. You can do a multi-sig with multiple cold cards or multiple hardware wallets. Um, in this in this example, we're doing uh, a single sig. So uh, we're, we have uh, single sig at the top, and then what we're going to do is we're going to click uh, connect hardware wallet. We're going to plug it in. Uh, and basically import that public key. Uh, so the next screen, uh, we're just going to click scan, and your cold card should show up once you've plugged it into your uh, cold card and you put in your PIN and you've accessed your wallet. Uh, and you're going to click import key store, which is just you know, importing your public key. And uh, this will show up. So uh, under the key store there, you can see it might be a little small, but it says master fingerprint. And that's what I was talking about. So you can compare that eight digits on the Sparrow app, and you can compare that on your um, uh, hardware wallet, cold card, and make sure that those those line up and you know are identical. If you and if you are air gapping your your cold card wallet where it's complete and never gets plugged into a computer, this is how you get to verify and say, mm. am I actually sending to the same wallet that I have the keys for here versus what's on my computer? That's your verification. Yeah. So uh, receiving funds is super easy. You don't even need your cold card in hand. Uh, it can be in your vault at home or, or wherever you, you know, underneath your floorboard and your mattress. Um, and you, know, you already have your Sparrow uh, you know, watch-only wallet set up, so you don't even need it to receive funds. Um, so uh, it's really easy. You just have a QR code or an address. It just generates a bunch for you, and you can just click one and you know, show it on your phone or whatever, and you know, whoever's paying you just scans it or you know, copies that address and, and sends to you. You don't need your private key to, to do any of that. Um, just for spending, you'll, you'll need that. So this is an example of receiving funds. You'll just go to the, the blue tab here and click Receive. Um, and uh, on the top there, it'll say Address, and it'll have you know, your address. And it'll have a QR code, too, so you can scan it or, or whatever. And this is all you need. That's all. As, and as soon as Sparrow detects funds coming to that address, it'll auto-populate a new address for you. Those that are new and don't understand that mechanism, it's just a bit of a privacy-preserving best practice where if a whole bunch of transactions go to a single address, every person sending there can begin to see, oh, this person also has money that came in from another address and so on and so forth. Uh, so basically, you'll just, the second funds come in, this page will refresh with a new address and a new QR code for you. Yeah, yeah. Try not to reuse fun or reuse addresses. Um, that's kind of the main main point here. Uh, so spending. So we're going to go through kind of a, a quick demo of how to spend funds and how to sign it from your cold card. Again, this is the plug-in method. Um, you know, it, it may be a little less uh, you know secure than you know an air gap method, right? There's been no exploits. Uh, the device is extremely secure. Your your uh, private key does not leave. Um, but we always recommend um, once you've done the beginner plugging it in and, and going that method, 
um, you know, potentially, you know, learning a little more and, and trying the air gap method. Um, because, you know, we want, you know, security is, is, you know, you want the best security. You don't want to, um, you know, um, have, you know, half security, right? So uh, this is just an example of what you're going to be seeing. So instead of clicking the receive uh, blue tab there, you're just going to click the send one. And you're going to put in the address you want to send to. Um, I know there's a lot of information that, that it looks like here, but all you need to know is who you're paying to and what the amount that you're paying. And uh, you know, fee rate is basically just you know, a miner takes a fee for processing your transaction. So you need to pay them a little bit of, of Bitcoin so that they will include it in a block. Um, and I really like the spend screen on Sparrow because it's one of those things where it, you begin to ask questions, but you can get through it without knowing everything, right? Like if you know where you want to send it, you've got an address, the label is just your own, where am I sending this? And then an amount. The, the fee slider is nice and easy. As you slide it from left to right, you can see in the middle it says medium priority. So as you slide it higher, you'll see high priority, meaning it's going to go through quickly or next block. And as you slide it lower, it means it'll take, it'll take longer, but you're spending less on the fee. So it's just a nice, easy way of visualizing what's happening. Um, and down below, for those that are familiar, that's effectively um, kind of like... It's it's a, a flow of your funds going into the transaction and out of the transaction. I'll quickly just mention that uh, if, if you don't know about coin control, if if you don't know what a UTXO is, effectively every time you receive Bitcoin, um, it's not just a singular balance. It's actually like if you have a wallet full of bills. If somebody gives me a one dollar bill and a five dollar bill, I can see those denominations sitting within my wallet. It's the same thing for Bitcoin. Every time you receive Bitcoin, there are actually distinct pieces of Bitcoin in your wallet. And so you can actually see the flow of things as you spend out. And it actually destroys those original bills and creates two new bills of different denominations. One going to the destination and one paying the fee. And sometimes change coming back to you. So that it just shows the flow of funds. You don't need to know this, but it's a really cool feature of Sparrow. So once you set all your parameters for your transaction, you've basically created what's called a PSBT, a partially signed Bitcoin transaction, where you've, you know, you've set the parameters again, um, but you need the private key to sign still, right? So you need your coal card at this point. So you're, 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 uh, you, got, you created the transaction, and now you're going to basically um, send that to your coal card to sign it, and then your coal card will, will send a message back to Sparrow saying, I've signed this. And then you can broadcast that, um, and you know it'll sit in the mempool waiting to be confirmed. So we're going to show a little uh, tutorial, uh, a little demo of uh, how that works. So we've cl uh, clicked create transaction. We're going to finalize and sign this transaction, and then we're going to sign with our coal card that's plugged into our computer. We click sign. We're going to go over to our cold card, and all the information is going to be shown on the screen, you know, confirming uh, the amount that you're sending and the fee rate. So you want to make sure that you know, the address is obviously correct and the fee that you set. Look is how low fees were today. Yeah. <laughs> 141 sats, nice. Right, yeah. So you click send, and then it, it's finally signed. You broadcast that transaction, and now it says unconfirmed, and you're basically just waiting for that uh, to be uh, confirmed into a block. The, the, the flow is really nice, and if you had seen before, the air, gap, uh, the air gap method is there. If your cold card wasn't plugged in, you would have your SD card plugged into your computer, and you'd basically save the information of what you want to do onto the SD card, bring it to your cold card, and then the cold card could say, yes, this is allowed. This specific movement of funds to this specific address is allowed and basically gives a signature and you're just bringing the signature back to the computer to say, okay, cool, we can let the network know. Yeah, and you know, the coal car could be as, again, as beginner or as advanced as you want. You as a user get to choose uh, these options and I think having those options are, are really great for you know, someone that's just getting started or someone that wants you know, the most secure hardware wallet uh, device on the planet, right? Um, quick show of hands, can, can the people that have used a cold card just stick up a hand again, just really quick? Okay, cool, hands down. Now, out of those people, how many people have done an air-gapped transaction? Okay, 
cool. A lot more so, than I thought. Yeah, yeah. actually, that's, good. that's pretty that's good. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't done one, that's your homework. Uh, if you haven't done an air gap transaction, go home after the conference and just try it. It's really interesting and it helps wrap your head around what's actually happening is you're effectively through the software saying, this is what I want to do. And then you're going to the device to say, I sign off on that. It's just the act of getting that information to the cold card. Are you plugging directly into a computer? Or are you saying, I don't even trust doing that. I'm going to actually keep this thing never plugged into anything. And I'm going to relay information back and forth with an SD card instead. That's the difference. Right. You, you don't want to connect it to the internet whatsoever, right? The private key lives fully offline. We don't even know if you power on your device, right? You, you, know, you want the best security possible. And you know, a, a cold card does that for you. Let's do it. All right. We're, we, we have a bit of time, so we want to uh, touch on, um, we mentioned the tap signer, if that's cool with you guys. Yeah? All right. All right. Let's cool. dive into it. Yeah. So uh, this is our tap signer. Um, it is, uh, a, like I said, a budget-friendly version of the coal card. Um, you know, you might not want to put millions and millions of dollars on this one card, walk around with it in your wallet. But if you don't want a hot wallet with, you know, a, a, a large amount of funds, um, then you can use something like this. And uh, it is extremely secure. It has a secure element as well, right? That, that labyrinth where, you know, if someone even tries to access or, you know, steals this from you, uh, you, can, you have a backup recovery and you can, you can always uh, get your funds back. And, and someone with this card, if they steal it from you, still cannot access your funds, right? The whole point of, of uh, cold storage is so that an attacker cannot get your funds, right? You know, we don't want that. Um, so the tap signer uh, does that for you. Um, so the tap signer is great because it's you know budget friendly. It's small, fits in your wallet, and you can just walk around with it and think of it like a two-factor authentication. Where you know if you want to spend funds, all you do is tap the card on your phone, put in your your pin that you set yourself, and 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 broadcast that transaction. Similar to what we just did with the hardware wallet. The other thing I like about it is I don't know if any of you get antsy in customs. But the odds of somebody sorting through your credit cards and customs are much less than being like, what's this calculator? Right. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> it's just a calculator, Ben. What do you mean? <laughs> oh. So uh, yeah, so we have a, a demo of kind of actually the setup process with this. Uh, the tab signer actually doesn't use uh, um, uh, 12 or 24 words. It, it uses like a, uh, just a long string. It's like an XPRIV. Um, so you don't have to actually worry about writing down a seed. There is a backup code that you write down and a, and a wallet file that you need to combine together to recover. Um, so you know, there's a backup code on the back of the card, but you still need the wallet configuration file to uh, recover. So you know, if someone steals your, your tap sign, you're, you're still OK, and they can't access that. So we're just going to go uh, show you a quick demo of how, that, how that's set up. So we're adding a key first. So we're adding the tap signer as a key. We're going to tap the tap signer. And, uh, and, and set this up. So we're setting up a new CBC, like think of it like a credit card on the back of the uh, credit card CBC. You're going to click yes. Uh, this part is just kind of the entropy uh, creating the, the wallet. Um, you can let the app do it, or you can do it yourself. Um, and, and again, there's an old CBC, like a, a, a one that comes on the card. You put in that old CBC, and then you obviously, you know, you want to configure your own pin. Uh, so you, you, put in, you put in your pin uh, at the bottom here. Is that your pin? Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> so you click continue, and uh, it's ready to scan, and it, it starts processing that and changing the pin for you. And you know, you label it, and then your key is set up. So, um, you so now that you have your key, you have to assign that to a wallet. So as you can see there, you have your keys and you have your wallets. So we have our tap signer one as a key, but we haven't added the wallet yet. So now we're going to add the wallet. So we create the wallet. We create a name for that wallet. The reason why you have to do this will be clear in a second. Yeah. And you're going to add that key. And how many keys do you need to spend? Uh, you know, we're doing a single SIG here. So uh, you're going to need that one key to sign uh, to spend any, any uh, um, you know, funds. So we're going to create the wallet. And this is the BSMS file that you're saving um, so that you know, when you want to back up, um, you can always have that. The, the, that file is mainly useful for multi-sig, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nunchuck usually saves that itself, so it's, it's pretty good. Um, but, uh, you know, it's nice to have sometimes just in case you, you know. Yeah, 
So the screen here, you can see you've got one key and you've got one wallet, and the one wallet uses the one key to approve transactions. Right. It might be a little small, but yeah, I'll say you know one of one single sig at the top there. And then when you're ready to uh, receive funds, you just click into that wallet, click receive, and the address will pop up automatically. And then when you want to spend, we're going to show you an example of how to spend. So we're going to click send, put in the amount, Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> We're going to put the address we want to send to, so you can, you can copy paste it in or you can you know, scan the QR code, whatnot. This is the fee rate. You, know, you can do that automatically or manually. And now we've created the transaction. Now again, we need to sign from our external device uh, because the private key doesn't live on your phone, it lives on the card. So we're ready to sign now. So we put in our PIN, we click continue, we scan the card. And now that that transaction has been signed, we can now broadcast that transaction because it meets the criteria needed to, to, to broadcast that transaction. So now it's been broadcasted, and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. We're going to show the... Uh, we're going to show a multi-sig multi -sig. as well. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, get, basically, we're jumping ahead to where you've already imported multiple tap signers. So you've said, OK, I've got, I've got three tap signers here. They're all listed as keys underneath. We show the setup for the multi-sig, don't we? Um, I think, yeah, we show up the, so, okay, so yeah, we're showing, that we're going to show, uh, so we already put, imported the three keys, because uh, we already showed how to import a key, so we're not going to go through it three times again. Um, but you can set up a multi-sig by yourself in, in like 30 seconds. I think this, it, it might, it, I think it took like 15 seconds. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's very easy, and I think a lot of people get nervous with multi-sig, and multi-sig for some people may be really beneficial. Um, and, you know, you might, some people pay a lot of money for companies to do it, and then if you do it with a company, then they know your XPUB, and they can watch your funds and potentially spy on you. Or you can set it up yourself in, you know, 10 seconds on your own phone, at your own home, um, safely and securely uh, with, uh, with Nunchuck. So we're going to show this example right now, and, and I'll kind of ex explain as we go. So we have the three keys here. We're going to create the wallet. Obviously, name the wallet again. So this is, I believe, tap signer multi-sig, probably. Continue. We have our three keys we want, and we need two of three to sign. And we're going to create the wallet. You can save that file. And done. How long was that? What? Ten seconds, maybe? Yeah. Multisig, right? Like yeah. that was insane. And so, in in uh, I can't recall if you did the the signing of the trans. Probably not. I don't. No, think I don't so. think we did the sign. Yeah. But it, it would effectively it would take you to the same screen. You say, hey, I want to send this much money here, and then it says, hey, we need you to sign. In the previous example, there was just one sign button, and then you held, you know, put in your pin and tap the card. In the example of a multi-sig, there would be multiple sign buttons. You would hit the sign button, put in the pin, and then tap the card. Mm. You could then, if you're smart and you geographically distribute the keys, then you could head over to the next location, open up the app again, hit sign on the next device, put in the pin, tap the card. You now have two signatures which you need because it was a two of three multi-sig. So think of it as a vault with multiple keys and you need to simultaneously turn two of them in order to open up the vault. So very, very, uh, honestly, it's probably one of the easier multi-sig experiences I've sure. had. It, yeah. can, it can get very complex if you want it to be, yeah. but um, I, I gotta give a tip of the hat to Nunchuck because yeah. They've built a, a really awesome interface. And it also highlights that, um, and, and we mentioned it earlier, that cold card, tap signer, stuff like that, can be used with various interfaces. Right. And uh, we showed Sparrow Wallet with cold card. We showed Nunchuck with tap signer. You can actually go the other way around, too, because cold card does have NFC. So you can enable that or disable it on the device if you don't like that. Um, but you can use NFC with the cold card and nunchuck. You can also get an, uh, an NFC scanner for your computer, and you can use tap signer on Sparrow Wallet on your computer. You could even have your, your tap signer visible on your computer with Sparrow and visible on your phone with nunchuck, and then just use the interface wherever you like at any time because 
the interface is just a way of seeing the same thing, of seeing how much money do I have, this is my account, I can audit my balance, I can add to it, and then I just need the key to unlock those funds and move them afterwards. And you know, for multisig and what we just showed there, right? We created uh, a multisig with a two of three, but you could technically do whatever you want. Ideally, in a multisig, you want to have the majority of the key signed. So you could have, uh, you know, for example, you had two of three. You could have a three of five. You can have a, uh, you know, fourteen of twenty if you, if you really want. Obviously, that's very advanced and you know probably not recommended for you know a very beginner person. Um, but it's very customizable, and you can set this up yourself at your home. Uh, very, very safely and securely, and you don't need anyone else to do it. Um, I, I think you know the whole point here is to show that this is you know it. It may look tedious or it may look scary to set up at first, but once you set it up and once you start playing around with it and just transferring a few funds back and forth, um, it 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 can be super simple, and you have a, a great companion app like Nunchuck uh, or a desktop uh, wallet uh, like Sparrow uh, to really help you out, and uh, it's it's really not that hard. Is it okay if I do a, a quick little shout out to Nunchuck one more time? Of course, yeah. Um, so he was mentioning uh, what what's called known as collaborative multisig, and so that's where people set up a multisig, but there's a company that holds a key just in case. And and you were mentioning, well, the compromise there is that the company that's holding the other key also gets a picture of the funds. And so if you're KYC'd in that process, if you're giving up your personal information, then there's a record somewhere that so-and-so holds a multi-sig that holds these funds if you put enough of the information together. Nunchuck has gone the extra mile to offer that service without KYC. So if that's something up your alley, there are options out there where you can say, you know, my privacy is important to me and uh, you can do it with nothing more than an email and that email can just be like a dummy email address and then you can use a collaborative multi-sig and the benefit therein can be, oh crap, I lost a bunch of my keys. I need uh, an, an extra just in case signer. And you can also do things like baked in inheritance planning where it'll automate that process down the line. So um, I, I'm a big fan of Nunchuck and what they're doing. I'm also a huge fan of Sparrow Wallet. I think it's one of the best desktop out interfaces out there. Uh, Craig Ra, who who uh, made it, is doing God's work. So uh, I think we should give him a round of applause if we can. <laughs> I think uh, one thing just to kind of hit home, and you know, obviously we're showing you how to export your public key and how to view your funds. Um, anyone with that public key knows all the all the addresses in that wallet and knows all the funds in that wallet. So. You know, be careful with that. Obviously, you know, you want to keep that to yourself, ideally. Um, you know, you and your wife, maybe. Maybe not your wife. You know, who knows? Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, th like, that's a very, it's very powerful. And, again, you don't need uh, a, the, you don't need the private key living on the tap signer card or your hardware wallet to receive funds. You only need it to spend funds. So uh, we get that question a lot. Uh, you know, it, you know uh, how do I receive funds? Do I need to sign anything for that? And y you don't. Um, so, you know, just make sure, you know, when you're setting these things up, uh, keep it on maybe a secure, uh, safe uh, device uh, and make sure not to show it to everyone. Don't, don't just show your, your public key to everyone because then they'll know all the funds in that wallet. So just, you know, something to be aware of and to hit home with. Um, and uh, a, a shameless self-shill. Uh, if you are trying to figure out all this stuff and you need a bit of hand-holding, um, you can go I, on YouTube, search BTC Sessions. You'll be able to find a Lord of the Rings length <laughs> tutorial on, <laughs> yeah. on cold card. Uh, it, but it goes through all of the basics yeah. that we cover, but also every advanced feature that the thing has. And there's a lot, and it's super versatile. So definitely yeah. check that out. And ditto for the tap signer, obviously much simpler um, quicker tutorial, but it's it's all there. It's all free. You can learn. Take a night, uh, have a hot date, and and learn how to use cold card. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming out today, and appreciate uh, you all being here. Uh, it's an honor to be on stage with you guys, and thank you to Ben for uh, for for being up on stage with me. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down. But Miami welcomed us with open arms.
We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee, a city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th.